My name is Richard Snyder. I'm with Magic Dry Cleaners, and we're in my establishment now. Uh, I recently relocated here from uh, a previous location over at 6212 Broad Street. And in case you don't know where that is, that was where the implosion occurred last spring uh, of the last high-rise that was in this neighborhood. I've been in the dry cleaning business for 15 years. I was located uh, in the other location for 14, and here we are. Uh, it hasn't affected me well. Uh, I've been on edge for going on a good five years. I don't think anybody needs to go through this stress. Um, I feel like I've been toyed and played with for the last five years by this local redevelopment authority, ELDI, and the participants of that, uh, and, and the players involved here. It's just been one long, continuous nightmare. Uh, one excuse after another. Um, it's just, uh, I've had enough. You know, it just seems incomprehensible to me that, uh, you know, five years ago I had a, uh, a sale, a rel retail sales number that was around $100,000 uh, across the front counter of my store over, over across the street. And here I am uh, in 2010, five years later, and uh, the, la the last number uh, for 2009 looked like at about $58,000. So, and it's been declining steadily ever since. Uh, which I believe was a result of the uh, gentrification of the neighborhood, that uh, the removal of those thousand units of housing, uh, only replacing them with about 124 units. Uh, it's just been an, atro an atrocious situation. Uh, it's, you know, at this point it's intolerable. It's going to put me out of business. How long, have you, how long were you in business in the high rise? It was a cleaner's for 30. Is that right? Good. That's great. So. That was uh, right prior to the, the election, a few days actually before I think the election was to take place. And um, when uh, the mayor walked in here and uh, with his uh, entourage and a group of reporters, you know, I saw it, saw it as an opportunity to make my point quickly and concisely. I tried to do that. Um, I tried to let him know that this was a, you know, a business in distress and that uh, you know we were uh, suffering some somewhat uh, financially as a result of uh, you know, the, the, biz, the building not being properly prepared. And uh, there's been a lot of uh, change in the neighborhood and that change has not all been good. Uh, they took a thousand units worth of, hou thousand units of housing out of these uh, couple of square blocks. That's adversely affected this business in particular. Being a dry cleaners, it's a, it's a locally, local neighborhood business. And, uh, you know, a thousand units of housing probably equated to about two thousand customers, and uh, uh, I expressed my concern to Ravenstall, and he uh, he told me just to be patient, that uh, you know I just need to hang in there. Well, I've been getting a lot of uh, you know bureaucratic, stone-hearted BS. You know, we'll do this, we'll get back to you, we're working on this and we're working on that. Uh, for instance, uh, uh, you know, I, I'm trying to work out a deal where we, um, we get some free rent for a while. Um, and um, part of that negotiation is that I participate in a, uh, in, with a, you know, a person from the University of Pittsburgh Help, to help me learn how to market my business and write business plans. And, um, you know, uh, if I participate in that and agree to do that, that they'll, uh, they'll give me a break on the rent for three, more, or three to six months. Um, it's way too much effort for way too little. It just proves definitively that they don't get it. Uh, they don't have any comprehension of what it's taking to run this business. Um, and to give you an example, uh, when I was initially um, scouring the neighborhood to try and find a relocation spot, um, they assigned a person to me from their uh, ELDI, assigned a person, and uh, her efforts were to uh, send me down to a warehouse location down in, uh, in Lawrenceville. And the other one effort was to send me over to a, uh, a location about uh, 500 
or 300 feet from my other store over in Bloomfield uh, in hopes I could operate out of there. It just clearly gave me uh, the impression that they had no understanding of what business was about and um, understood nothing about the urgency of now. And, um, you know, it's just outrageous and frighteningly dangerous that these people have the control that they have with the public money. It's really important to support the uh, sure. It's great to have a big, big uh, multinational here. Sure. It's also very important. We were just talking to, we think that they bring more traffic, so hopefully that will help small businesses mm -hmm. like you as well. So we're excited about that. Well, good stuff. Nice oh, meeting you. Yeah. Good luck. Yeah. I appreciate it. Thank you. Good to meet you. I'll be back. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And you think about like on Penn Avenue, you have all these empty storefronts. Why can't they just put you somewhere around here? Well, because that's not in, the, in their uh, vision, as Stefani likes to put it. Uh, our vision for the area is uh, somewhat uh, secretive, and uh, uh, we want to we, we want to follow our vision, in spite of the fact that we we have meetings and all over all over the neighborhood inviting the residents and the business members uh, to come and sh we share our vision with them. It's always unclear and it's always ambiguous and it's always non-productive. Nobody can afford to wait. You know, ELDI holds most of the property, owns most, mo owns most of the property around here now, or a large portion of the property, I don't want to say most of it, but they've got pages of pages of property in this area that they own. Um, you know, it's all about controlling who's here. And, uh, you know, they just want to, uh, you know, as, as we talked about before, they've got this, um, this vision for the, for the neighborhood uh, that uh, they say they want to include family businesses, but their actions prove otherwise. Uh, I'm not adverse to redevelopment going on in the community. Uh, I want to be part of that the redevelopment and I'm glad to be part of it, but I didn't anticipate that it was going to put me out of business or that I would have to borrow money uh, and increase my cost of, and expenses to be able to be a participant in this. After all, my, my position is I've paid for this business and I would have expected that if I was going to have to move um, that uh, funds would have been provided under the Uniform Relocation Act or the eminent domain provisions, uh, but I was wrong. Well, I talked to uh, the URA at first, and I was told they didn't have to help me. Uh, I talked to Jim Furlow's office. I was told that uh, by this young fascist down there that uh, I had no right to have uh, any expectation to be helped by the multinational corporation that was going to move into the, the location uh, that's targeted for the, or actually used, utilized for the Target store. Uh, I was told. Uh, uh, by ELDI that they would get back to me and obviously, you know, they did eventually get back to me and some arrangement was made for Mosides to, to pay for this, uh, for this uh, move. And as I stated, uh, uh, there was a significant shortfall in that, in that amount of money. What my hopes were, were that uh, they would pay for the uh, move entirely, that uh, it wouldn't have cost me anything, or that they would have offered me a buyout which they could have done had they provided, uh, if they had followed the uh, Uniform Relocation Act guidelines or the eminent domain guidelines and rules, which they didn't. Now, why they didn't is still speculative. You know, I still speculate that they did it for a sequencing, sequencing uh, as a sequencing device to keep them from having to pay the prevailing wage, the union wages, and uh, follow the rules and guidelines that would have affected me. So if they really and truly, as they state, want to have locally owned and family operated businesses in the neighborhood, such as this one, one that's supportive of the, of the neighborhood, um, well, then they better step up and, and be ready to actually carry this business to the point where it can, where it can, uh, where it can support itself. Because I can tell you one thing, when I left the place over there at 6212, I was covering my expenses and earning a living. Even though the income had declined over four years, I was still earning a living. I'm over here and I'm underwater and I can't tread anymore.